Hey guys, Rob Boehner with LiveX here, and today I've got an exciting new product from Ada Imaging. This is the Gen 3 HD 200 compact camera, and I've got a few lenses over here too to try out. Pretty excited about this because, uh, you know, a lot of times we're using uh, Blackmagic Micro ca Cinema Camera or uh, the Marshall CV502 for kind of our POV overhead wide camera. But um, this thing looked pretty interesting because it has a couple more features that um, are sometimes missing that I, that I really like about this one. So start, here it is, here's the camera. Just a little box, much like the Marshall CV502. Uh, very similar, maybe a little larger than that particular camera, uh, but that's probably to make room for the extra IO on the back. So what it has on the back is it takes a reference source. Um, it also has SDI out, HDMI out, a mini XLR for um, audio in, and iris control here via Sony Visca um, control. So it has a uh, light for the uh, sync. Now using Genlock is really important to us in a live environment. That's one of the ways we stumbled upon Ada Imaging and found some of their products because of all the good stuff that they make for Genlocking things. And we had to try the other lenses as well. One of the coolest things that I read about this camera is that it has um, adaptive frame rate. Uh, and resolution based on whatever Genlock source you send it. So if your Genlock source is uh, 1080p 30, then this will automatically change to 1080p 30 signal. If uh, your Genlock source is 720p 60, you got it. They'll change to 720p 60 on its own when you run the reference signal into the camera itself. So a uh, very solid build quality. Uh, this thing is metal. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of metal, but it feels very solid. The lens here says this is the 3.6 millimeter lens. This is how you unscrew it. This is a CS mount for those of you who are familiar with it. Um, I believe it would work with other CS mount lenses, but I would probably just stick with the lenses that Ada Imaging gives you um, or that you can buy from Ada Imaging, I should say. Uh, anyway. It's a very solid build quality, and I can't wait to see what it looks like. Into the manual, we also, there's another version of this, the Gen 3G100. It looks like it has uh, just an SDI out, HDMI out, and XLR in. I'm not sure exactly, but that's what it looks like. It looks like it omits the uh, reference sync and the iris control uh, parts of it on this camera. So. Uh, yep, that's exactly what I thought. There it is, the 3G100, the smaller version of this does that. These would be great crash cams or um, little desk cams if you needed something to hide in the set. Um, and often we're using these in the back of the venue to give us a big POV wide so that we can you know, not use one of our other broadcast cameras that can be very difficult to hang from the rafters or uh, railing or something at the top of uh, the venue. Um, it has a 2.1 megapixel CMOS progressive sensor. Uh, it's aligned with SMPTE 292 and 424 standard, including 60 hertz. Uh, the self-adaptive resolution and frame rate feature allows the camera to self-adopt to the external reference sync signal, like I mentioned. It also takes advantage of tri-level reference, has a built-in OSD on-screen display to go through the menu options and also control via Sony Visca protocol. Uh, it has embedded audio via SCI and HDMI. Uh, there's no onboard mic, but you can bring audio into it. So if you wanted to use like a little baby shotgun or something like that, just to get some um, ambient, I uh, don't believe it has an onboard mic. Uh, most of these don't. I would be pretty surprised. If it does, that would be kind of crazy because most of these little uh, crash cams do not have that. But um, basically, uh, in the menu, one of the reasons why this um, and other cameras like it, uh, like the Marshall CV502, are uh, preferred over a GoPro is because you have so much control. The reason why I like this more than um, than the CV502 is that it 
has a simple power solution, whereas the CV502 has a rather odd uh, method of loose wires and stuff like that to power it. This looks like a pretty self-contained system. Um, and the, back to the menu options on how to get a better image out of this is one of the reasons why you would want this type of a camera as opposed to a GoPro. Uh, you can control white balance, backlight, there's a day to night setting, there's also auto exposure with shutter priority and it takes gen lock. We have uh, lens control, we have iris control, uh, iris priority. There's also uh, automatic gain control on the audio uh, as well as exposure compensation and there's a, a flickerless um, setting that allows you to cut down on any flicker if you're using it in an environment with some uh, maybe some fluorescence that uh, aren't really video quality lights uh, occasionally in cameras you can get some flicker or banding that I'm sure all you video professionals out there have seen before uh, this has something to kind of attempt to counteract that to some degree uh, and then the backlight settings uh, exposure settings mic attenuation, audio levels, sample rates for audio, uh, genlock features, H-Sync phase, uh, phase set, uh, and then it also has software, so that assumes that uh, it could be upgraded or updated via firmware updates uh, in case they run into any improvements. It does uh, 1080p resolution at 60p, non-drop frame and 59.94 uh, drop frame uh, as well as 1080i, 60i, um, 59.94i, 720p, 60, down to 30p um, and 25p for PAL users. There's no 24p but uh, my guess is, is if you're using this you're probably in an environment sort of like mine in television where uh, we're only using uh, the 30, 60 frames for our capture. Nothing more in the box here really. We have our uh, international adapters as well as our, um, our adapter for our I.O. So I was wrong actually. I think initially I said that this was a mini XLR. I don't know why I said that because this is just a breakout cable. It's not mini XLR. What it is is it's got a, a 3.5 millimeter uh, jack to bring in TRS audio uh, via XLR to TRS or mini jack uh, cable. And then this is for power, this is what you would uh, plug that into. So yeah, let's get, let's get right into the lenses. Let's see what those are all about. Um, so this was, you know, this may be a little confusing for some of you. Uh, I have to admit I was a little confused. Um, but what I'm assuming is, is that this is the widest, this is uh, sort of a normal or medium, and this is a telephoto, uh, CS 2.8, CS 6.0, and CS 12.0. I'm imagining that is something like millimeters. Let's open it up and find out. The one that comes stock on here is 3.6 millimeters. So it actually sits right in between these two. Um, so if we had to think for a moment of how this translates into regular photography or video, um, this would be your, your ultra wide, uh, kind of your fisheye, your 10 millimeter maybe, to uh, 15 millimeter, something like that. Um, and then this uh, 3.6 millimeter would be somewhere in the range of like a 24, something that's really wide uh, for a 35 millimeter equivalent. 24 millimeter would be really wide, but it wouldn't give you the bending of the world, the distortion that you might get from some of the fish eyes. Um, the six millimeter is probably something closer to a normal lens, which we typically associate with a 50 millimeter on a 35 millimeter equivalent scale. And the 12, uh, which would probably be double that, so about 100 millimeter on a 35 millimeter uh, equivalent scale. So. Let's just pull all these out and see what they look like. So here they are, cute little baby lenses. Um, they're 1.8 on the aperture, uh, which means they do very well in low light and have uh, as much limited depth of field as you could hope for out of a sensor um, this small. But uh, the main 
use case for these is as a crash cam where you want things, um, everything to be in focus. Uh, let's see, this one is a, the 3.6 millimeter actually goes down to f1.2, um, whereas the 2.8 millimeter goes to 1.8. Uh, slight variation there, but um, nothing, not a huge difference in what you're going to see uh, from the amount of light you can get into the camera. Uh, the 6 millimeter here uh, is 1.6, um, f1.6. And I believe this one over two, two, two and a half inches is the um, minimum focusing distance. I'm not sure on that, but um, at any rate, it probably focuses pretty darn close to the camera. Um, and then this last lens that I have here is the 12 millimeter. Yep, 12 millimeter. Um, and my suspicions were correct when reading the back of the box there um, that the 2.8F means 2.8 millimeter. Um, CS 2.8F is probably the model number of uh, what the lens is uh, called and they, that number is what the focal length is. So 2.8, 6 millimeter, and 12 millimeter, and the stock lens is 3.6 millimeter. So again, if we were to put these in order, then we would see them something like this, of the widest to the most telephoto. And uh, that's going to give you the full range of what you need. I do recommend if you buy one of these cameras, if you invest in one of these cameras, that you do go ahead and get another lens um, that you may want to switch to in, in the case when you're rigging it. Typically, when you rig these lenses in a certain area, you don't have a whole lot of room or movement to um, move up or come back. Uh, it's probably going to land wherever it's going to land, especially to use it as a high wide POV in a live environment. So you're going to want a wide selection of lenses. And I think four lenses is the perfect amount. Um, most of our POV kits uh, have three to four lenses in it. And that gives you the, the wide range of what you need to uh, mount it pretty much anywhere and get the look, the framing that you need for your live show. So that's pretty much it for the Ada Imaging Gen 3G 200 camera. I'm Rob Baynard uh, with LiveX, and we have a couple more Ada Imaging videos for you to check out on some of their other products, especially their GenLock stuff is really cool, um, and their USB 3.0, uh, their SDI to USB 3.0 uh, converter. So check those out as well, and thanks for watching.